Okay, I think we'll get started. So today we're going to come back to the delta G equation and uh, talk about some of its features. So the delta G equation is that at any point in the reaction, uh, delta G can be gotten from delta G standard minus RT ln Q, Q the equal uh, the uh, reaction quotient, and um, at equilibrium. What equilibrium means is that delta reaction G is zero, Q equals K. So let's see what happens here to this equation. Uh, we plug in zero, we get delta reaction G st standard equals, or plus RT ln K equals zero. So we get a very important equation that the standard delta G reaction is related to the equilibrium constant. So if we know the equilibrium constant, we can get the standard delta G. If we know the standard delta G, we can get the equilibrium constant. All right, now a couple of things. Um, state what maybe you're thinking, oh, that's pretty obvious. That is delta G and delta G standard are not the same. But this gets confused a lot and easy to make this mistake. And even in some books and um, other places, you might see these kind of get intermixed a little bit. So delta G standard is a constant for any given reaction. And we can see that because th this is a constant for any given reaction. And so at a, at a given temperature, so at a given temperature, it's a constant. Now it does depend on temperature. So we change the temperature, this will change. Now, um, delta G though, same everything's at the same temperature. This changes through the course of the reaction, so-called reaction coordinate. And so if we were to plot delta G as a function of the reaction coordinate, we're going to um, start, let's start with, uh, so let's start here with only products or only reactants. So then Q is zero, right? Products over reactants. So it doesn't matter what this is. If Q is zero, log of zero is minus infinity. So we start off with minus infinity, which just indicates that this is, there's a very strong thermodynamic driving force to have the reaction go forward. Now, how far it goes is gonna depend on when delta G is zero. So as we progress along this reaction coordinate, we are raising product and lowering reactant. And at some point, our products over reactants our Q is going to equal our K, in which case delta G is going to be zero. And so this is going to be our equilibrium. So this point on the reaction coordinate is how much product, how much reactant we have in our sample. Then if we progress past the equilibrium, and let's take it all the way so we have only, um, so we'll stop here at only re, uh, products. Our reactants are zero, that means Q's infinity. So it doesn't matter again what this is, this is RT log of infinity, that's infinity. Now it's a soft infinity, because it's going as log, but it's infinity nonetheless. And so this captures the behavior of delta G, which varies through the whole reaction. This is what determines this point. This is determined by delta G standard. So let's chemically uh, get an intuition here of what delta G standard is. That would be that if we set the lab at one atmosphere of pressure, 298 Kelvin, and then we take one molar of A, one molar of B, one molar of C, one molar of D. So everything's at one molar concentration and we mix that. Delta G is gonna say, if it's negative, delta G standard, if that's negative, then that means relative to the standard state, putting one mole of everything, so starting with one mole of everything, then are we gonna to move towards reactants, or to sort of towards products, that's gonna be a negative delta G. Are we gonna 
move towards reactants, that's going to be a positive delta G standard. So the delta G standard tells us which direction are we going to go from the standard state. And this can be class this can classify reactants as product favored and reactant favored. Product favored and reactant favored. So those labels to a re reaction are referring to the delta G standard. It could very well be that we have a reactant favored reaction, but we're still in the situation where we're product favored. And this is what I think gets confused a lot, especially in biochemistry, uh, where these get intermixed. There can still be a very strong forward driving force for a reaction, even if it's reactant favored. What it means to be reactant favored, it'll just stop when there's before there, or when there's more reactants around than products. But if we're still on the reactant side of the equilibrium, there's going to be a driving force to go forward. Likewise, if we have a very product favored reaction, if we take it all the way, then there'll be a driving force to go backwards. So this is just talking about where we end up relative to the standard state. And again, delta G is through the course of the whole reaction. Now, um, let's take the delta G equation again. Let's utilize this and plug that in here and get a new, a different version of the delta G equation. This is going to be very handy for us when we come back to the idea of Le Chatelier's principle and look at it in a more quantitative way. We're going to use this equation. So delta G now is RT ln Q over K. So this ratio of Q, Q over K is an um, uh, important parameter for determining delta G, as we can see here. All right, now let's bring in delta DG, right, from before is DH minus TDS. Okay. So what that means for the reaction is if we take this up to the reaction level, now we're looking at the reactant state compared to the product state, so products minus reactants, that becomes a delta reaction G, which is delta reaction H minus T delta reaction S. And if that's true, it's certainly true at standard conditions, so delta G standard is a delta reaction standard minus T uh, delta S reaction S standard. So let's look at this in the context of exothermic reactions or endothermic reactions. So we, we've learned that an exothermic reaction will give off heat and an endothermic reaction will take in heat. We know that although enthalpy is not precisely heat, under constant pressure and reversible conditions, enthalpy is heat. And we can get away with thinking about enthalpy as heat. And through the course of general chemistry, in the general chemistry books, we often just use those uh, synonymously. So we can say an exothermic reaction is when uh, delta H reaction uh, standard is negative, and an endothermic reaction is when it is positive. Okay, so let's see how this impacts the equilibrium constant. Uh, the other thing too, um, these guys, although in principle do depend on temperature, they're very weak functions of temperature. So for modest changes around laboratory conditions, these can be taken as constants. So in a sense, delta G standard is essentially linear in temperature. Not exactly, but to a good approximation it is. This is constant, this is constant, and then here's the explicit T dependence for the delta G. So let's take uh, delta G standard and write it like this. Okay, that's what we know it is. Now let's solve for K. So we're going to bring an RT over to this side, and then we're going to exponentiate both sides. So that's going to get our K by itself. And then we're going to give E to the minus delta reaction G standard divided by RT. 
Now let's plug in this in here for delta G standard. And now I'm going to use property of exponents that e to the a plus b is e to the a e to the b. And what's going to happen here? I'm going to get a minus delta h over rt. And remember, this is essentially a constant. So we do have a t dependence up in here. And then I'm going to have this minus is going to cancel that. So I'm going to have a plus delta s t delta s over rt. So the t's are going to cancel. So notice this is essentially, that should be a a standard state. This is essentially constant. Okay. Now it might be very meaningful, very large or small, but it's essentially constant. So therefore, the in terms of the temperature dependence, k is proportional to e to the minus delta h over rt. So now let's look at the two situations. When delta h is negative, we have an exothermic reaction. We now have a negative number here times the negative, that's going to be positive. So this, the bigger this is, the bigger this value is going to be. So if we start to turn up T, if we raise the temperature, right, we're dividing that by this, that's going to lower that value and lower K. So if we have an exothermic reaction and we raise temperature, then we lower K. Right? So make sure you really can internalize that, really understand that. For an endothermic reaction, this is positive, right? The negative is sitting out here. So if this is big, right, then if we take and divide, we're dividing by T, so we're gonna minimize that. So if we raise the temperature, we're going to raise the equilibrium constant there. And so the equilibrium constant goes different directions depending on whether we're exothermic or endothermic and whether we add heat or remove heat. So depending on the reaction, if you're in the lab uh, and you want to get more product, because right, we want to get that equilibrium constant more towards the product, well, if it's an exothermic reaction, then we'll want to cool the the system. If it's endothermic, we'll want to heat the system. All right. Um, so this will um, set us up now for um, doing looking at some uh, some reactions. Um, we are going to um, before we get into the reactions, we're going to come back to Le Chatelier's principle and uh, really think about how um, we can quantitatively approach uh, Le Chatelier's principle.